Hey everyone, Ben here. We're going to do our first educational video starting with arbitrage. We talked previously about doing this video, it's long overdue. We want to start kicking off some educational content uh, to try and impart to you some of our knowledge and to clarify all these terms and things that are thrown around that might be difficult to understand. So BitAI, we've obviously covered in, is an ICO in the past. They had originally started off their platform talking about doing uh, artificial intelligence trading as a way to make money on their platform. So these lending ICOs, we lend them money for you know 90 days, 120, whatever. And these ICOs, these coins, these managers, they tell us, hey, we're going to take your coin. We're going to manage it in some way to make a profit. And you know, maybe we make 5% today or something like that. We'll give you 1% uh, and we'll keep four and you'll continue to get that 1% ish for the next you know 120 days and then at the end 120 days we'll release your capital and you've got all this money and you can choose to lend back with us or not so you know artificial intelligence we can do a video on that if you're interested uh, all sorts of other methods of of making money we're focusing on arbitrage today after their ico started the bit ai talked about doing arbitrage or ai based arbitrage so using ai to generate arbitrage arbitrage strategies uh, on their website they showed an update where they've got a platform showing their arbitrage trading in real time. If on their YouTube channel, I believe you can go watch a video on this whole interface uh, trading live. At least the claim is trading live. Uh, another example would be Thorncoin, which just finished its ICO, finished its ICO last week. In their white paper, you know, they talk about trading strategies and their second bullet point here. We are currently working on arbitrage trading algorithm, which will be added to our trading stack in the very near future. So. These, these different platforms are talking about arbitrage. What the heck is it? That's what we're about to talk about. So in its simplest example, arbitrage is a trading strategy in which you take advantage of price differences on different exchanges. And of course, this has historical rooting in stock market, equities trading, futures trading. And now that we can trade cryptocurrencies, it exists in cryptocurrencies. And so you might have two different exchanges, let's say uh, Bitfinex and GDAX, for example, and between these two exchanges, you may have different prices for Bitcoin, of which they're trading at. You may have one trading at 10,000, one trading at 10,500. Why might this happen? Well, you know, it's not the exchanges that set these prices, it's you and I who are trading these coins that set these prices. And for whatever, for whatever reason, there may be a price a, a discrepancy at a certain point in time, and there's a... You know, others will talk about as a guaranteed profit, as we'll see, it's not really a guaranteed profit, but there is profit opportunity to take advantage of this price difference. So how might you do that in the simplest method? Uh, you might have money parked in both exchanges, say you had uh, USD sitting there, and you notice this price difference, you're like, hey, look, 10,000 here, 10,500 here, I'll buy one Bitcoin on Bitfinex, then I will transfer it from Bitfinex to GDAX, and from wall to wallet. And once it gets to GDAX, I'm gonna sell that coin. And I bought at 10,000, I sold at 10,500. Holy crap, I just made 500, isn't that awesome? Well, that's a simple example and it's the easiest example to understand, but it's one that would never play out in real life. And why is that? Well, these, these platforms change over time, right? These things are traded 24 seven. Every second, the price is changing. So in a volatile market, especially something like Bitcoin that can change 10, 20, 30% in a day, 30 might be high, but easily we've, sent, we've seen 10 to 15%. If I buy uh, right now, it might take, as we've seen an hour, two hours, three hours to actually transfer the coin from Bitfinex to GDAX. And by the time it gets over there, it may not be 10,500. It, it now might be $9,990. Uh, so if I sold at that point, I would actually lose money. And, you know, it could go up in that time, who knows? But you have this transfer time between the exchanges and that really makes this simplest example of arbitrage not realistic for a trading platform to actually use. Uh, a more realistic example of how to do this, uh, we've got right here, this is called cross-market arbitrage. And the way this would work is you'd have money parked over in two different exchanges. Let's say you had 10,000 USD in Bitfinex, you had 10,000 USD in GDAX, and maybe you, uh, let's say we owned one Bitcoin in each exchange as well. So I've got essentially the same amount of currency in both exchanges. One Bitcoin, same amount of USD. Yeah, two Bitcoins total and a total of $20,000. So this is really my net total between both accounts. And what I want to see is 
either the number of Bitcoins go up or the number of USD go up. You know, I, I don't care necessarily what happens in an individual exchange. I want my total amount to increase. So we've got this issue with the uh, time between exchanges to transfer coin that we just discussed. So what's a, what's a way you could take advantage of price difference between the exchanges uh, simultaneously? Well, since I've got one Bitcoin in both, and let's say in this example again, Bitfinex is being traded at 10,000, the GDAX is being traded at 10,500. Well, I could buy one Bitcoin on Bitfinex, right? I have $10,000 sitting there. That would, of course, suck up my whole uh, balance. And at the same time, I could sell one Bitcoin on GDAX, which is right now listed at 10,500. What happens after that? Well, on my Bitfinex account balance, I've gone from one Bitcoin to owning two, and I don't have any USD left because I spent it to buy that Bitcoin. In GDAX, on the other hand, uh, I had one Bitcoin, I sold it, so now I have zero. I started off with 10,000 in that account, now I've got 20,500 because I sold at 10,500. So my net balance between both accounts is still two Bitcoin, right? Before this trade, I had two Bitcoin. Right now I have two Bitcoin. They just happen to be in two different exchanges. Uh, before the trade, I had 20,000. After the trade, I've got two Bitcoin and 20,500. So here I've made $500. And if I've got a good API, a good platform coded up, I can do this in real time, right? We know the price is changing second after second, minute after minute. I don't want to wait to actually send Bitcoin from one exchange to another to pull off, uh, take, pull, pull off this trade and take advantage of the price difference. Here, by having coin in both exchanges, I can sell, buy and sell immediately and take advantage of this price discrepancy. And yeah, this is just two examples of arbitrage. There's several more. Uh, lots of different ways of doing this. You can look some of those up on your own, but at minimum, we wanted to try and explain to you how Thorncoin, how BitAI and some of these other platforms are trying to take your lending amount and turn it into uh, some type of return that they're profit sharing with us. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. There are some issues with arbitrage. And of course we talked about what they were for this simple example this cross-market arbitrage where you've got coin in both uh, two, two different accounts has its own issues and, and you can start to think of these right you've got exchange fees so if i buy a coin or i sell a coin that costs some some type of fee now for some some exchanges that might be you know uh, one uh, 0.15 percent i've seen there's there's others that are higher but the exchange fees are not the same across uh, different different exchanges you've also got volatile assets right so i've got latency that becomes an issue i'm you know somewhere in the world located right now and i've got some uh, time that it takes for my computer to send a command to gdax and for gdax to respond to my computer and tell me something's happened uh, that, that's also true for seeing the price action in real time so if i have uh you know say it takes me you know, 50 milliseconds to talk to gdax and it takes me you know, I've got a really poor connection to Bitfinex and it, it takes me uh, 100 milliseconds. You know, if, if this price is changing really quick between the two, 10,000, 10,500, you know, I've got several millisecond delay or something else happens and I'm trying to, to confirm a, an order execution that I'm trying to get through, you know, this price could change enough in that period of time because I've got a lag issue between two different exchanges that that could wipe out my, my profit, right? And this is a more pronounced example where we've got a $500 price difference, but you know maybe I'm trading and there's only a $100 price difference. Uh, that, that could evaporate quick. So you've got a latency issue between exchanges. And then in equities, uh, at least in the US market uh, for the uh, NASDAQ, et cetera, companies pay tons of money to have the best connection to those exchanges uh, possible. They locate their companies strategically in different states. They pay exorbitant amounts of money for uh, you know direct pipelines into uh, you know internet connections directly to the exchanges using fiber whatever they can do to have the lowest latency between their api their computers their internet connection uh, into those stock exchanges so latency becomes an issue what's another problem that can happen uh, okay exchange fees we talked about withdrawal fees so if i'm actually trying to realize this twenty thousand five hundred that i've made and i'm all happy with my trade i'm ready to pull out you know, there's another fee that I have to pay. So I, I paid a fee when I bought, I paid a fee when I sold, and when I'm trying to pull money out, I pay another fee. Uh, these fees add up, 
right? So if, if, I, if I don't account for those, my profit margin between this price difference that I thought I was trying to take advantage of evaporates and might even go negative. We also know that holding investments in exchanges are risky, period. You know, I don't hold anything in an exchange, but to, to pull this off, I need to have coin in an exchange. There's, there's no two ways around it. And these exchanges get hacked. Uh, these exchanges can you know get locked up for a couple days. We've seen Kraken, et cetera, uh, you know, be, be down for a day or two. There's a whole bunch of lost opportunity when that happens and the risk of your money being stolen. So there, there's a lot of a lot of issues that can come up. Another one is volume, right? So I'm trying to trade one Bitcoin here. Now, let's say I am Thorncoin and uh, how much did they make in their ICO? I'm, I'm going to guess somewhere between six and seven million uh, worth of USD that they pulled in. Well, if they're taking, you know, our lending amount, and let's say it turned into 5 million that, that, that gets lent back to them, and they're trying to take advantage of this price difference, well, you know, one Bitcoin's 10,000. I try and divide that into, you know, million, two million, three, three million. That, that's USD. That's, that's a lot of Bitcoin. If at any given time I'm trying to sell this one Bitcoin on GDAX or let's say I've got a million dollars, let's say it's, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 Bitcoin, and there aren't, there isn't enough volume on the buy side of my selling GDAX of, say, 20, 30 Bitcoin, someone that wants to buy 20 or 30, then I can't actually sell this amount, right? I'm trying to sell, say, 40. There's only enough buyers to buy 20 worth right now. I'm only going to sell half. You know, if I'm trying to then buy on uh, Bitfinex, try and buy that 40, if there's not enough people selling at that point in time, I might only buy 10. So, you know, I, I can have these partial fills or no fills at all or get stuck, right? I'm, I'm trying to um, sell something I can't whatsoever because uh, there's no buyers, but I was able to buy no issue, buy no problem in Bitfinex because there were a bunch of sellers. Well, now I've really kind of screwed myself because I didn't actually take advantage of this price difference at all. And now I've just committed my USD that could have been used for uh, a better arbitrage opportunity with better volume at that point in time. But now I can't. So volume becomes an issue. Uh, hopefully that all made sense if it didn't rewind the video. Uh, but you can see that this is not a trivial thing to do. You know, I'm also holding coin on an exchange we know that these things can change in price quite a bit. So if I'm sitting here holding Bitcoin in both exchanges all week, try and take advantage of price action, and you know I can take take advantage of 200 here, 500 there, and, and price difference. Well, if Bitcoin goes down 15% for the week, and I could only make a trade like this a couple times, uh, I certainly don't make up for Bitcoin going down 15%. So you know they, these platforms talk about we're going to do arbitrage. Uh, it's not as simple as just saying I'm going to do arbitrage. You, know, you you have a lot of risks that you take advantage of or that you're that you're uh, opening yourself up to. The larger your uh, starting investment is, you know, however much we've we've given them to lend with, you know, lending a million is or trading a million with arbitrage is different than trading two million or three million. We just talked about the volume issue, right? So if, if I'm trying to trade one strategy that my AI, AI bot came up with, for example, to uh, take advantage of arbitrage and it's and it's doing it with uh, a million or two million and suddenly people lend more money and they're trying to use that same exact strategy for a three or four million dollar account, uh, there just may not be enough price action, enough volume uh, at, at these price points to actually execute. So there's a lot that comes into play to to actually execute this arbitrage and it's not as simple as just saying oh look we've got a bot uh, or oh look we're we're, we're going to do it we're working on a on a algorithm and uh, all, all is fine and, and that's why we want to see these ICOs prove to us that they can actually do what they're saying we're happy that BitAI showed something it looks like they're working towards something but uh, you know this isn't verifiable I'm not knocking these ICOs I'm just saying that we want to find the next best lending platform and the way that they can do that is by proving to us that they can actually take our lent money and turn it into something with a verifiable system not just talk about it so you know that's uh, a quick a quick 101 or maybe a little bit more in-depth uh, tutorial on what arbitrage is there's this website called tokenspread.com that i wanted to show you and this is a pretty neat website that plugs into a bunch of different exchanges and it shows you what the price spread is right so you know, here we're taking advantage of a price 
a price spread of five hundred dollars, ten thousand to ten thousand five hundred. Uh, that was just a made-up example. Here, they show you on a daily basis what the Bitcoin to USD spread is. So we're seeing right here that you could have taken advantage of almost a 10% spread. It shows you which exchanges you could have done that on, right? BitMEX had a low of 9,800, uh, and then Exmo had uh, 10,750. And this is not you know lie, a high and low for the day. This is a high and low at any given time. So at the same time, there was this much of a price difference and there it just updated. And what's great about cryptocurrencies is there's so much inefficiency in these markets that you can actually take advantage of these things. Uh, that's, that's really the service. You might ask, well, you know, are these people just stealing money by taking advantage of this price difference? Well, uh, no, what, the, what they're doing is creating an efficient market. You know, why, there's no reason why there should be a price difference on two different exchanges for a coin. The reason that there is a price difference is because there is inefficient markets. So arbitrage adds efficiency to the market so that there's a, a more stable, agreed upon price consensus at any given time that doesn't result in people getting screwed on one exchange versus another. I mean, how, how would you feel if on Bitfinex your Bitcoin dropped to 8,000 and on GDAX it went up to 1,200 and you couldn't get coin over in time to actually realize that price and you could only sell on one, buy on the other? You know, you'd be upset to see uh, your Bitcoin go down on one exchange versus the other. No, the cryptocurrency should be worth the same no matter where you're at, where you're trading, uh, where you're transferring from. So that's that's really the service that arbitrage provides, an arbitrage trader. Uh, here we see Bitcoin to Euro, look, 13.5%. So here you're, you're also seeing a inefficiency in the Euro to USD conversion. And of course, stock traders uh, do... Uh, currency exchange for fiat, uh, currency arbitrage all the time. They, they take advantage of these types of discrepancies. So it's kind of a three-dimensional way of doing it. But our example, we just talked about Bitcoin. Of course, this exists for Dash. It exists for Ethereum, so on and so forth. This is kind of a neat website that shows you what those type of um, opportunities are. And this also shows us, at least, that if these platforms, these ICOs are doing the right thing, there actually is opportunity on a daily basis to make real returns. So if they know what they're doing, and like I said, it's not trivial, it's not trivial to come up with these arbitrage trading bots. Uh, if they know what they're doing and they're putting in the time and, and have got the right expertise, there's lots of opportunity here every day with different coins to make a, a pretty big percent return. Uh, and, you know, people ask, you know, are these 1% per day returns in these lending platforms feasible? Well, I mean, if you really knew what you were doing, uh, you can see here, there's all these different coins that we're trading uh, with up to a 1% or more uh, price discrepancy. So, sure, I mean, if, if you could take advantage of 10% or 5% or call it 2% on average per day uh, in your trading uh, algorithm, uh, for arbitrage, you absolutely could pocket a percent for yourself if you were BitAI or Thorncoin and share a percent of that profit with us. So, you know, some of these platforms that are, you know, we've seen some that are 5% five, five or higher uh, for a long period of time. I don't really think those are sustainable. Is 1% sustainable? Sure, if you really know what you're doing, it, it might be. But it's not an easy thing to do. So, anyways, that's a uh, quick overview of what what arbitrage is. If you want to continue seeing this type of content, please let us know in the comments. Please subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and let us know what you want to see. We've got lots more in the pipeline we could do, uh, but we don't want to waste anyone's time with content that they're not interested in. All right, we'll catch you later.